Hello, food lovers. Welcome to another episode of Valley Home Chefs. I'm your host, Bob Brown. Behind the camera is the man who makes this all come together, Brendan Best. And our guests this, on this episode are Amy Rantala and Tom Savaloya. They're a beautiful home here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Amy's going to whip us up a pear gorgonzola salad with ingredients right here from her garden. And then Tom's going to take to the grill and whip us up some locally grown New York strip steak. So we're looking forward to a delicious meal. Let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and heat the frying pan to medium high heat. So when they put in the sugar to caramelize the almonds for the salad, the sugar will caramelize more easily. Now I'm going to put in approximately an eighth of a cup of sugar to caramelize and you can see how it's heating and it's very important to start stirring, stirring and not stop because you'll burn the sugar. The recipe calls for a quarter cup of sugar but I cut it down to about an eighth just to cut down on the sugar in the salad. As you can see it's starting to caramelize like it's going to be done really quick. What I'm doing right now is putting the almonds out onto a wax paper so the almonds can cool. All right, so I'm gonna wash up the lettuce here. The sinks, nice fresh cold water. Why cold water? Just keeps the lettuce nice and crisp. Break off the end. Get it nice and rinsed through. And then before putting it into the salad, I like to dry it out a little bit so it doesn't get the dressing doesn't get too watered down and the caramelized nuts don't get diluted out. So that'll sit for a little bit, get the water off. So what I'm doing right now is making sure the lettuce is dry and I will go ahead and rip it into the bowl. The recipe calls for about a head of green lettuce, but we, we prefer romaine, just like the flavor better. Is tearing the lettuce better than like taking a, a knife and fork and chopping it up? I have heard that using a knife can damage the lettuce, so ripping it is a better way to preserve the flavor and the crunch. So now it's time to go ahead and peel the pears um, and then I'll, I'll cut those up and put them on the top of the salad with the other ingredients. When you are uh, purchasing your pears, uh, are there particular things you look for when you're picking out pears? For this salad I'd like them a little bit firmer because it again gives some crunch. Since we chose to do steaks tonight, this is just such a good salad together. And you don't even have to, if you get a green pear. Um, you don't need to even peel. So now I'll go ahead and cut the pears, core them, and put them into quarter inch strips. You grab a different knife here. These are maybe a little bit more firm than I'd like. Again, the pears are typically a wintertime fruit. A juicy pear would be nice, but it's what we've got. And we try not to slice off our finger because it's really not fun to do stitches while you are cooking. Okay, so my next step is to go ahead and put some of the green onions in. I'll put approximately a quarter cup. Just make this to our own taste. Green onions are also known as scallions, am I right about that? Mm -hmm, you are. So now I'll prepare the avocado to slice that. I'm going to cut it lengthwise so you get two halves. And then I'll just go ahead and make slices right through. The skin is fairly thick, so you can just guide your 
knife right along the side, the inside. Is avocado healthy? Avocado is exceptionally healthy. Okay, what's it got? All kinds of good fats and oils in it. Okay. So just scoop that out and kind of mix it around. This avocado mixing with the, the gorgonzola cheese is quite good. Well, here's the tricky part, getting the seed out without cutting yourself. Is that seed edible? No, but you can grow an avocado tree out of it oh, okay. in your home. Indoors? Indoors. Really? Have you ever they done grow that? very I tried and I failed. So I purchased Gorgonzola at Festival Foods here in Eau Claire, freshly crumbled already. In the past I've had to buy it in a block and crumble it myself, but decided to take it the easy route. And again, that's what's going to mix in with the avocado and a bite of Gorgonzola and the, and the steak together with a little bit of Cabernet is a second to none taste. to try and keep the veggies as fresh as we can and prevent the pear and the avocado from oxidizing with the air and turning brown. We'll go ahead and put some cling wrap over the top and then I like to keep it nice and chilled. And actually it helps the bowl when you serve it to be chilled so then the salad stays nice and crispy too. Well, I bought these New York strips at Rump's Butcher Shop over in Altoona, and they, they sell only locally raised beef there, so that's kind of nice to know that it's coming right here from the Chippewa Valley, first of all. But um, what I'm going to do is not overly complicated. I just put a little olive oil on uh, both sides of the steak, along with some kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. So um, steak's been out for about 20 to 25 minutes uh, getting to room temperature and then um, once they get to that point it's ready for the prep. Now you were mentioning earlier about the why you, it's, it's better to get the steak at room temperature before you do the prep. Yeah you want your steak to cook evenly and uh, if you get the, the steak to room temperature it gets can cook a little more evenly that way. Uh, you've got the kosher salt. Can, is there? A, well, what's the benefit of kosher salt as opposed to any other kind of salt I might buy? Well, the uh, recipe I follow is by Bobby Flay, and that's what he said to use. So that's what I'm Trusting using. Trusting his judgment. Okay. <laughs> All right. And anything special about the type of olive oil you're using, or the type of pepper? Uh, the extra virgin olive oil is the first press of the olives, and it just has a a little better flavor than uh, just the lighter olive oils. All right, now we're out, outside at the grill. We're ready to, uh, we're ready, Tom's ready to cook up these New York strip steak that he got locally, locally grown. So walk us through the process here. All right, well, the grill's been preheating and it's up to about 650 degrees. So uh, we're gonna get it in. We've got a searing station on the left and uh, then we got a little cooler area for it to cook a little longer on the right hand side but first I'm gonna, okay. first gonna going to put some olive oil on the grill you got to be a little bit careful there so why do you sear the steaks first you sear them you want to get those nice grill lines in the steak that uh, is uh, a good flavor with the caramelizing of the olive oil right onto the steak so is that side of the uh, That's the, the hot the side of the grill. Hotter, okay. Yes. And we'll put them in there for about uh, two minutes. Then we'll flip them, sear both sides, and then we'll bring them over to the uh, cooler side of the grill and let them cook for another couple of minutes on each side. Yeah, we'll just finish searing on this side, and then we'll move them over here and uh, cook them for another couple minutes, I'll put the uh, meat thermometer into it and we'll okay. get it about 120 degrees. I'll take them off the grill and um, put them, we'll let them rest under some tin foil. They'll continue to cook for another few degrees and that's about where we like them. All right, and we'll just 
close that for a little bit. What have we got uh, bubbling over here? Uh, just sauteing some mushrooms, like a little sauteed mushrooms. We just put some uh, little butter and olive oil and cut my mushrooms, uh, baby bella mushrooms, baby bella. in half. All right, and we'll go let these rest for about five minutes and they'll be ready to eat. All right, well, Tom has finished cooking the steaks, brought them inside here now, and uh, before we sit down and eat, Amy's got to whip up some dressing for the pear gorgonzola salad. All right, so the first thing we'll do is measure out a third of a cup of olive oil. Same kind of olive oil Tom put on the steaks. Speaking of what Tom put on the steaks, uh, did you happen to notice when he came inside, he put a little butter on those steaks? That seemed to catch you by surprise. You know, I've always said he makes a really good steak, and I did not know that he put um, butter on there. Mm. I did just add prepared mustard, about one to two teaspoons, just goes to taste. And then I'm going to also add some red wine vinegar, and that's about three tablespoons. And then I'm lazy. I like to use a garlic press instead of chopping it. So I'm just going to get my head of garlic ready here to put into the press. Picking up a little bit of the brown part of the garlic. That's not very good. And we'll just crush that right on into the dressing as well. We don't like vampires around here, so <laughs> put a lot of garlic in there. So I notice you're using the uh, yellow mustard. Uh, have you experimented with other kinds of mustard? I think we have used the brown mustard before, but the yellow mustard tastes better, according to my husband. And then it's just salt and pepper to taste. And we like pepper, so I'll grind a lot of that on there. All right, I got all my ingredients in there. I'll put a little bit more red wine vinaigrette. You like exact measurements, though, don't you? There's an right. art to it, not just science. So how can you, do you, do you, are you looking for a particular color to know that you've got enough? No, it's, no, this is, this is good. Um, I just want to make sure I whisk it up really good before putting it over the salad. The last two steps would be to put the dressing on the salad, which has been chilling in the refrigerator for the last half hour or so. And then time to take the cooled caramelized almonds and just sprinkle it over the top. They're a little bit sticky to the wax paper. Just break them up with your fingers into bite-sized pieces. Uh, I know you have the three sons. They range in age from? 14, 12, and 10. Do they like salad? Yes, two out of the three do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Two out of the three do, and we do have the garden out there, and sometimes they'll go out there and pick the tomatoes, and they love the cucumbers out of there. And, and then they douse it all in ranch. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> And that is it for our salad. We can dig on in and enjoy it. it. Looks delicious. Next, we'll go ahead and open up our bottle of wine and uh, let that breathe so it can be ready for our steak and salad dinner. We'll also go ahead and uh, slice up some bread too. That's always nice to have with this meal. Now, is, is there something particular about this type of wine that goes particularly well with, with, with the steak? Cabernet is just a really strong red that tastes good with a, with a bite of steak and gorgonzola. Okay, here we go. This is the hard part of the show. We have to now eat. I think that's gonna be fun. But before we do, a toast to our hosts. Tom and Amy, thank you for bringing Valley Home Chefs into your beautiful home. Viewers, you should be here. This is gonna be really good. Tune in next time. Bye.